What's up guys, I'm back. So as you can tell from the title of this video, um, I guess I just wanted to address how you should go about picking out which rear gear ratio you should be getting for your vehicle. Now this actually applies to all vehicles, but for the first half of this video, I'm going to go ahead and um, talk specifically about Mustangs, specifically about 3.7 since this is like mainly the audience that I have. But then the second half of the video, which I'll, I'll put a link or I'll put like the time thing so you could just skip to that half. Um, we'll talk about actually looking at your transmission ge rear gear. Sorry, we'll talk about actually looking at your transmission ratios and your rear gear with your tire size and RPM that you want, so that you can figure out what rear gear ratio you want for your vehicle. So this applies to everyone, but the first half will just be for V6 Mustang owners for 11 to 14 Mustangs. So. This question comes up a lot in the cycling community because it's probably one of the best mods you can do regard, like if you're NA, boosted, or whatever, if you have nitrous, um, it's just one of the best mods you can do. However, some people tend to go a little overboard and they'll say, oh no, go get, get 410s or whatever. And um, for me, what I'd have to say when you're deciding rear gear ratios is what is your end goal with a vehicle? Um, are you trying to build just a car that's always going to be NA and you just maybe want at most like a 12 second V6 Mustang? Or are you looking to get into the 10s or maybe even 9s in the future when, when more stuff's available? And uh, are you looking just to mess around on the street or are you a track focused car? So keep that in mind. I would say get the gear ratio you want for your end goal. Um, it makes it a lot easier so you don't have to do a lot of this stuff over again. I actually went too aggressive with 373s and now I was maxing them out before so now I had to switch to 331s. I did it myself, had to spend all the money again. It was a real pain shimming everything and it's just not fun to do things twice when you could get it right the first time. So what would I say? A lot of people say 373s are the best. I'd say yes for it for like an NA and you plan on going boosted in the future, but you're not really planning on like building a motor or like pushing it to its fullest potential, I'd say 373s would actually work. Now that goes for both like a manual or standard. I'd probably more recommend though a 355 rear gear ratio just because um, you do have a little bit more room to grow as well as if you have an MT82, you're not shifting as often and it's not so aggressive. And um, the difference is negligible on like how much faster you're gonna be with 373s. But the difference is there when you're actually trying to push the car to its limits and you're talking about um, like what mile per hour you'll be hitting at what gear, which I'll be showing that later on the laptop. So when people ask, like what gear ratio is the best? I'd say 331 or 355. Anything in between there would work too as well. Um, it's just 331s you probably have a lot more to grow with. However, you're not gonna see a big of a difference in like performance gains. Like it's not gonna be night and day difference versus like 373s or 410s. Like you'll feel like your car is incredibly fast now. 410s are probably gonna be fine, but I really just don't recommend it because the moment you do anything else to your car or if anyone else wants to buy your vehicle, the gears are just too aggressive um, for anyone to really use. And if you have an MT82, you're gonna be shifting all the time and you're just, you're probably gonna get beat. It's gonna feel fast, but you're gonna get beat by the cars that don't need to shift as often. So, I know some people may disagree with me. Some people are gonna be like, oh, I've had 410s, never had any issues. Or 373s, I love them, they're the best. Um, but this is talking from, a, this is me talking and I've had 373s and I've already maxed them out. Um, so that's why I switched to 331s. It wasn't anything to do with like my diff broke or anything like that. It's just like I was hitting the max and then I had to shift into fifth, which by then shifts, fifth is an overdrive gear. So you don't really want to get in an overdrive gear when you're racing. And um, yeah, so that's why I switched. This is kind of a difficult subject to talk about just because there's so much that goes into it. So you can actually calculate what mile per hour and everything like that you're going to be hitting at, per RPM based on the, the tire size that you have, which is tire height, not how wide your tires are. Your, your tire diameter, your um, RPM, transmission ratio, so like per gear, and your rear gear ratio. All you need is those things and you can actually go into like the Wallace Racing calculators and you can type in everything in 
sorry, and you can type everything in and it'll tell you what mile per hour you're gonna be trapping at that RPM. So that's important to consider because let's say like someone else is like 373s but they're only shifting at like 6,000 RPM just because they, they want to play it safe, but you're gonna be shifting at 7,200 RPM. Well, you're gonna have a lot longer of a gear. You're gonna be able to put more mile per hour per gear in your transmission than that guy who's shifting way early. So that's important to consider. I'll go ahead and show that now, and that'll help you decide on what you wanna do, because if you're trying to build a car that traps like 140 miles an hour in the, in the quarter mile, which that would be around like a nine second car, like a deep nine second car, um, that's, that's one thing to consider. You don't wanna go too aggressive and you don't wanna go um, too lean, I guess. You don't want to like where you actually, it's robbing a little bit of power, kind of like having 273s. So you want to get that perfect match. So you need to think ahead on what you want. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Okay, so let's get started. I, I've already played around with this. I made a recording, but I'm going to go ahead and start over because it was kind of all over the place. And now I know what I want to say. So the first thing you're going to want to do with your vehicle and um, I'm going to provide this for you if you already have a 6R80 3.7 is you're going to want to find out the transmission gear ratios. You could just do a quick Google for whatever vehicle you have. If you have a 4L80, 4L60, or if you have an MT82 Ford Mustang, you just type in Ford Mustang MT82 gear ratio transmission. And uh, this is first gear, that's the ratio, second gear, third gear, fourth gear, as you can see. What we're mainly going to be concerned with for, for like Cyclones is fourth gear. You know, if you had like a, a Turbo 400, you'd only have three gears. And if you had a Power Glide, you'd only have two gears. But fourth gear is kind of the magic number because as you can see, fifth is overdrive. And what overdrive means is that this is actually going to, um, your engine RPM will be spinning less than your wheel RPM. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay, so we're mainly concerned with this one. You normally don't want to get into overdrive. And uh, so let's go here. So that's 1.14. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go on this uh, gear speed calculator. You're going to put your vehicle tire diameter first. So what I currently have is a Mickey ET Street uh, 275 6015. Yeah. And. Um, so that's a 27 and 27.8 inch tall tire. That fourth transmission gear, fourth transmission gear is 1.14. Now let's just compare to the stock ones, which are 273s, um, and then let's go 373s and 4 tenths. I need to get rid of that. <laughs> cool. So it calculates us. See, you can see all the like all through your RPM what mile per hour you're gonna get. Now this varies just a little bit. Um, as much as two tenths of an inch on your tire size could change like at these higher RPMs, it could change these values by a mile an hour or two miles an hour. So it does vary. I found that with 373s at 7,000 RPM, I was maxing out at 131 miles per hour. This calculator says it was it should have maxed out at 136, but that wasn't the case with me. However, there's like different factors. My my wheel diameter might not actually be exactly 27.8 inches, but four miles an hour out of 136 to be off, that's not that bad as far as a margin of error. So this is pretty accurate. I wouldn't say that expect this to be 100%, but it's decent. So here we can see at 7,000 RPM, <laughs> your 273s would hit 186 miles per hour. If you had that much power, in fourth gear, you could hit 186 miles an hour. And then um, your 373s would hit 136, and then your 410s would hit 123. Now that's pretty, like, see, if you had a built motor cyclone, or you were in the higher, if you were a turbo cyclone, and you were really pushing your car on, like, E85, you should be trapping, like, 130 miles an hour. If you have four tens, your gear is going to be way too short to ever do that. You're going to be shifting into fifth gear, or you would try to, like, put more RPM, but the more RPM you're trying to turn, the more dangerous that is on your engine, so you'd try shifting into fifth, but it would be at the very end of the quarter mile, so it'd be just a waste. 
So it'd probably be better just to stick it at 7,000 RPM and ride the limiter through to get the best ET you could get. But that's just, I mean, you made a mistake. You got way too aggressive gears if you're at that power level by now. Now, if you were NA, that would be better because at like you, you would be using the most power you could ever do. So with these gears, um, if you can hit within the quarter mile, like where you're at the very end. So, sorry, let me reword this. So with these gears, the way they work is you want to make your goal mile per hour match up with what red line is going to be in the gear that you want to be in at the end of the quarter mile. That makes it so that you maximize that entire gear, but you're not overusing it to the point that you need a shift in a fifth, which is overdrive. So you're getting the most power per gear in the quarter mile. Now, I know that's a little bit difficult to grasp, but if you actually go and do this, it makes a lot more sense. So, um, if you were NA, or you were just pro-charge, not built motor, or whatever, 410s could actually work out with you with a 28-inch tall tire and um, a 6R80. With an MT82, I don't know what the gear ratio is, so you'd have to do that yourself and go on this calculator and look. But I, I really wouldn't recommend it because then you'd have to change it out if you did anything else. If you decided that you wanted to push more on your Pro Charger and go E85 and, and try to like break a record, you would just have way too short of gears to do it. Now, I realistically, as I was saying earlier, was trapping 131. Now, if we go here, you can change your tire diameter to change like how much mile per hour you're going to get. Because we can see, oh, I didn't put my current gears. So let's go ahead and put what I currently have, which are 331s, and compare it to my old gears. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to try to go quickly through this because I want to go ahead and cover one more thing about the tire diameter. So you can see before with 373s, I was going 136. Really, it was 131, realistically. I think the, the tire diameter was just a little bit different. And uh, now it's saying at 7,000 RPM, it would hit 153 miles an hour. I won't have enough power to be trapping 150 miles an hour. Um, I would probably need like 900 horsepower, 800 horsepower, or somewhere around there to hit that, which I'm more going to be in the six to 700 horsepower range, so I'm actually trying to trap 140. Uh, so I can change the tire size so that I at 7,000 RPM, because that's, again, for me, with your tuner, it could vary. Your tuner might just want to keep it at 6,500 RPM, but for me, I'm going to be shifting at or 7,000 RPM is going to be my red line, so to maximize that power, I can move down to a 26 inch tall tire. Now, when you move like to a smaller sidewall, you are losing a little bit of traction because um, the, the higher sidewall you have, the, the more wrinkle you get, which is basically turning that energy that could be lost just by spinning into potential energy. Um, so, uh, you are able to make that up with suspension and stuff like that, but my goal is really to cut like a 1.4 or a 1360 foot, so I think I can still do that. So let's go ahead and start again, and let's remember in 331s, which is what I currently have, I'd be trapping 153, but with a 28 inch tall tire. Now, if I go to 26 inch tall, let's do 331s again. And here we go. I'm at my goal. So most likely I am going to have to go to a smaller tire size than what I currently have. I am going to go ahead and hit the track and test this out in real life. I'm not just going to do calculations and sit here at a desk all day and never go out racing because that would not be racing. But um, that's, that's basically it. That's how I decided what gear ratio I want. Um, and I hope you guys now understand how it works. So that you're not just taking people's word for it on, oh yeah, 331s or 373s for a Pro Charger is the best. I have it and it works. You know how it actually works. You can go on a, and calculate what mile per hour you're going to be getting 
So I hope this was helpful. I'm going to go ahead and cut back to filming myself and talking to a camera while I'm alone with Chappie. <laughs> okay, cool. So we're back on the camera. I hope you kind of liked how I was explaining stuff on the computer. Um, now, I, I guess I failed to mention it while I was recording the computer, and I guess I'd rather just do it in front of the camera. The, what you're going to want to do is decide what mile per hour you're going to like maximum want on that gear that you plan on trapping in in the quarter mile at the end RPM that you need. So for me, for example, I want to trap 140 and with my power level that's doable based on like other cars I've seen at that power level. So I want to trap 140 miles an hour. So I picked a 331 gear ratio and then with a 26 inch tall tire, or 27 inch tall tire, at 7,000 RPM, so it's all those factors at 7,000 RPM, it's doable. That's how you want to decide your gear ratio if you're talking about for racing. Now, there's the whole thing about, oh yeah, I'm just pucking around the street and um, I don't really care about like the quarter mile and ever take it to the drag strip. I just want something that feels fast. Go ahead and just pick whatever you want. I mean, that's just all subjective, but I, I wanted in this video to explain from a racing perspective how to pick your rear gear ratio. So you'd have to do that yourself as well. You're gonna have to pick your mile per hour, which that's the first thing you wanna do is what's your goal mile per hour. Then you're gonna pick the gear ratio and then you're gonna do engine RPM and then you can adjust your tire size according to that. Now, if you can adjust it to a, a taller tire, the better. Um, just like I said earlier in the recording. Anyways, that's it. If you have any other questions, I'm decently knowledgeable in this. Uh, I wish I would have made a video of and saw my gears as well, but that was just so much work that it, it just was too much for me to film. But if you have any questions, go ahead and comment down below. I'll go ahead and include the link to the Wallace Racing Calculator. Anyways, that's it. If you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. If you're new here, you can go ahead and subscribe and you can keep up with my Mustang and the Lightning. Um, things are coming together with that. I think I'm, I have another video that I'm either uploading with this or I already uploaded. <laughs> I don't know what my schedule is. I'm kind of filming everything together. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped you and I'm out.